36 years passed since the accident at the Chernobyl nuclear power plant. We all understand how terrible the catastrophe turned out to be for all mankind. How much resources and effort were expended to eliminate the consequences. Subsequently, the perpetrators of the accident were found and convicted, but were thus fully to blame for what happened. Convicted under Article 220 of the Criminal Code of USSR, Deputy Chief Engineer Anatoly Dyatlov denied his guilt until his death. What exactly could Dyatlov do that caused such global problems? Was he justly convicted? Was anyone else involved in the accident? This is V Techno 2 and we are starting the reconstructions of the events of those years and we will tell you about how it really happened. Right. Little is known about the life of Anatoly Dyatlov. He was born in the village of Atamanova and grew up in a simple family. He attended school until the 7th grade, then entered the Norel College of Mining Metallurgy in the electrical department, graduating with honors. After three years of work at the local enterprise, he entered the MIFI, where he was able to qualify as an engineer physicist with a degree in automation and electronics. Further, Dyatlov was sent to work in the shipbuilding plant, named after Lenin Komsomol in the city of Komsomolsk on the Moor. He was more of a theoretical physicist and had never worked with a nuclear power plant before, but in 1973 he was transferred to the Chernobyl station under construction. For several years he rose to the rank of deputy chief engineer of the station for operation and received awards, the badge of honor and the order of the red banner of labor. Judging by the materials of the trial of Dyatlov, at work he showed rudeness, slowness and constantly did everything in his own way. Looking at the testimony he was unfair. He promoted his acquaintances from the Far East to the position of managerial physicist, made a scandalous situation at the station and swore at the operational shift. For this many workers did not respect him. Almost the same thing was shown in the HBO series Chernobyl. Quote from the notes of Grigory Medvedev in the Chernobyl notebook. A strange demeanor, head bent forward, elusive glance of gloomy grey eyes, strained intermittent speech. He seemed to squeeze out the word with great difficulty, separate them with significant pauses. It was not easy to listen to him. The character in him was felt heavy. The forecast regarding Dyatlov was confirmed. Clumsy, slow-witted, difficult and conflicted with people. So, was Dyatlov capable of an instant the only correct assessment of the situation at the moment of his transition to an accident? I don't think he was. Moreover, the necessary margin of caution and sense of danger, which are so necessary for the head of nuclear operator, was not sufficiently developed in him. But arrogant disrespect for operators and technological regulation more than enough. But Dyatlov himself, in the book Chernobyl How It Was, considered his sentence unfair. They began to consider him, in fact, the main culprit of the accident. According to him, he was a strict boss, but fair and competent. He always acted according to instructions. Colleagues from whom Dyatlov was familiar from his work in Komsomol Konomor told the same. Dyatlov was in his own book. In any case, during the work, none of the subordinates left because of inability to work with me. Maybe I was harsh, but no more. I was demanding, yes. It is difficult for me to judge what kind of boss I was, whether I mastered the art of communication. Still, I think I was not the worst. How did I treat people in general? How someone deserved and treated. And at work, only the professional qualities of the worker mattered to me. 
I realized that it was impossible to recruit more than 200 people who were pleasant in all respects. There was no one to whom I would give indulgences, and those to whom I would be meticulous. Let's go back to the fateful days. On April 5th, 1986, Planet Measures were scheduled for the preventive maintenance of the fourth power unit of the Chernobyl station. During such work, experiments are carried out on the equipment. It was supposed to carry out the cold down of the turbogenerator rotor, through which the kinetic energy of the turbogenerator, in the event of its shutdown, was supposed to provide energy to the pumps for cooling the reactor. At the Chernobyl station, a test has already been carried out three times. For various reasons, the experiments failed. The TAP management demanded that this test be carried out before the May Day holiday. And no one dared to object to the order. According to the plan approved by engineer Fomin, the emergency cooling system of the reactor were already turned off and the reactor power was reduced by 50%. Then a call came from the dispatcher of Kiev Energo, who prohibited further reductions in power until April 26. In this mode, the RBMK reactor worked until 12 hours and 10 minutes p.m., when the dispatcher allowed a further decrease in power. Referring to Datlov book, on April 25th, the night shift got sufficiently acquainted with the materials of the upcoming test and was ready for this kind of experiment. Then it went something like this. When switching from a local automatic control system to an automatic total power regulator, the operator failed to keep the reactor power at 700 MW, and it fell almost to zero. In order to increase the power, they took out almost all the control rods to slow down the reaction and stopped pumping water to the reactor. As a result, accumulated reactivity destroyed the xenon that appeared in 12 hours, which slowed down the nuclear reaction. April 26, 1986, 1 hour 23 minutes 38 seconds a.m. Akimov, realizing that something was going wrong, told Toptonov, the reactor's senior control engineer, to turn on the reactor's emergency shutdown button. The automatic reactor shutdown system had long since been manually shut down. The unamendable happened, something that left a dark stain on the history of mankind. On April 26, 1986, from 1 hour 23 minutes and 44 seconds to 1 hour 23 minutes and 47 seconds, two powerful explosions occurred that destroyed the fourth power unit. In the black control room, where the entire shift management gathered, no one was aware of anything and did not know what to do in such a situation. Further, Dyatlov ordered to put water in the reactor to cool it. Also, the fourth power unit, roughly speaking, was destroyed. Later, Dyatlov personally made sure that an explosion had occurred. Anatoly Dyatlov wrote, It's a crash. The ultimate catastrophe. According to Dyatlov, the wrong decision was that he, shocked, immediately after the explosion, sent two employees to lower the rods manually to cool the reactor. When Dyatlov came to his senses, it was too late to return people back. It is strange that he forgets in the box that he called people from the day shift to replace Akimov and exposed one more shift to radiation contamination. After the disaster, Anatoly Dyatlov suffered from non-healing wounds on his legs due to radiation sickness. Dyatlov was released from the hospital in November 1986 with the second category of disability. He learned to walk again. In December, Dyatlov was arrested. He was interrogated from 6 to 8 hours a day, after doctors say that, due to his serious condition, he could be interrogated for no more than 2 hours. The interrogation went on for 3 months. On July 7, 1987, Dyatlov and other suspects in the accident, director of the Chernobyl nuclear power plant Bruhanov, Chief Engineer Fomin, Head of the Reactor Shop Kovalenko, Chef Supervisor Rogoshkin, and Inspector of the State Atomic Energy Supervision Authority Laushkin were brought to the Chernobyl Palace of Culture for trial. 
All six were charged under three articles of the Criminal Code of Ukrainian SSR. 167th – Criminal Negligence 165th – Abuse of power or official position and 220th – Violation of safety rules at explosive enterprises and in explosive workshops. Despite the remarks of Dyatlov, other defendants and witnesses, that until that moment no one in the USSR had ever ranked a nuclear power plant as an explosive facility, the prosecutor said that this court was guided not by the usual rules for everyone, but by the decision of the plenum of the Supreme Court of the USSR. Dyatlov agreed that under his management the water flow of two or three main circulators exceeded 7,000 cubic meters per hour, due to which extreme vaporization began, overheating and destroying the fuel cells. Although that after the failure he did not increase the power to 700 MW and left less than 15 control rods, which made the reactor too unstable. He said that he pressed the emergency shutdown button too early, and although that at the moment of the maximum drop in the power of the reactor he would read it and was not at the block control panel, otherwise he would have immediately stopped the experiment. But witnesses argued otherwise. As a result, Anatoly Dyatlov pointed out that the station personnel committed only one serious deviation from the instructions that day – a decrease in the operational reactivity margin to an unregulated level. According to him, the automatic protection of the reactor was simply not designed for such situations, which is why it would not have been of any use in any case. In addition, the explosion occurred immediately after the emergency protection was activated, which was unprovided. Despite the fact that experts say that not a single nuclear power plant was designed for an accident and the designers did not give a justification for the complete safety of using the reactor when all instructions were followed, the court ruled the reactor exploded due to a large positive steam effect. The personnel of the station are to blame. Although there were some reservations about some imperfections in the design of RBMK reactor and flaws in automatic protection, these reasons were recognized as insignificant against the background of the actions of workers. The reactor is not explosive if used correctly, wrote scientific leader of the development of the RBMK reactor Alexandrov, chief designer of the RBMK reactor Dolizhal, and other employees of the Kurchatov Institute. The same version was presented by academician Valery Legasov in Vienna for the International Atomic Energy Agency. Legasov was not present at the trial. Dyatlov was found guilty and imprisoned for 10 years despite his illness. The court is like a court, the usual Soviet one. Everything was predetermined. Anatoly Dyatlov, Chernobyl, how it was. At a meeting of the Politburo a couple of months after the accident, there was a discussion that a catastrophe with such a reactor design was inevitable. But the materials of this meeting were classified, and the Soviet management refused to admit their guilt for having made a mistake in using the reactor. The reactor does not meet the safety requirements for the most important parameters. Academician Valery Alexeyevich Legasov at the meeting of the Politburo of the Central Committee of the July 3, 1986. Referring to the state industrial atomic supervision, Dyatlov writes that the designers violated 32 points of the rules for the safe design and operation of nuclear power plants, and at least 10 different reasons could lead to an explosion. How should the workers of the Chernobyl station prepare for this if they did not know about it? At Dyatlov said, the explosion of the reactor was in no way connected with the experiment. Emergency protection could blow up the reactor in many other cases. And the workers were judged because the Soviet Union could not make themselves guilty of the disaster, so the fault lies with the staff. Anatoly Dyatlov serves his sentence in two colonies, despite his illness. Thanks to the petition first of Andrei Sakharov and after the death of academicians, his widow Elena Bonner and other scientists, Dyatlov was released in 1990. Dyatlov was treated in Munich, but he constantly suffered from the consequences of radioactive contamination and died in 1995 from heart failure caused by radiation sickness. 
The Atlov tried to ensure that the plant employees who worked that day at the Chernobyl nuclear power plant would no longer be blamed for the accident, so that society would pay attention to those who allowed the operation of equipment that did not meet safety standards. People may have different attitudes towards Anatoly Dyatlov. Consider that he committed negligence in his work. Or consider him a person who became a victim of a combination of circumstances. The main thing to remember is that one person cannot be blamed in that situation. There are also the designers of the RBMK reactors and the higher management who did not react to the gross number of violations at the Chernobyl nuclear power plant. This is VTechno2. Subscribe to the channel, leave your feedback in the comments. If you want to donate us, follow the links in description below. Thank you for watching. See you in the next episode. Bye for now.